My name is Asimwe Deborah Kawe, and I am one of the artistic directors of the Kampala International Theatre Festival. Kampala International Theatre Festival, KITF as we like to call it, was born out of an exciting relationship with the Sundance Institute East Africa and its support of playwrights and other theatre makers from Eastern Africa. We as Sundance Institute worked in six Eastern African countries of Burundi, Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, and Uganda. And we hosted artists from these countries through annual lab residences in East Africa and elsewhere. Over the years, KITF has become a space that encourages performances and post-performance dialogue that are about forging and holding connections, challenging taboos, and celebrating differences. This year is our seventh edition. And as we all know, due to COVID-19, we are not able to be together in person. So what we decided to do was to create a documentary that is a sneak peek of all of the performances that we have hosted over the years on our various stages. So I welcome you to take this memory lane with us and enjoy the kind of work that we have hosted and the amazing artists that have graced our stages. Thank you very much and enjoy this journey with us. out there and you are free. Fine, I will go, but you will regret this. You will never have a chance to be someone like me ever again. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. <laughs> You're the wicked one now. How can you be so hurtful? Eh, you think I was not hurt when you married another man? Is that so to be paper. Is that why you said okay to marry me for revenge? No, I am not that type of a person. I, I did forgive you, Mata, but I do not forget that you left me for another man. What? You forgive and not forget? What type of person does that make you look like? Loving? Caring? Forgiving? I'm not breaking! Those real effects here. I'm 
decided to uh, ask for submissions from you know from all over the world and we received sub almost about 70 submissions we read all of them we evaluated them and we selected five uh, five productions and three readings The performance is actually very visual. Mukalat Rasim's theatrical language is very uh, visual. It does not have a lot of language. 
uh, which makes it very universal, which makes it uh, able to communicate to different people. And this is why we are also happy to show it to an African audience, because we think it, they can also relate to the, to the subject. And because Mukalat, he is from a different background, he is Arab, he is from Iraq, but he is living in Belgium, so he is balancing between these two worlds, the European world and the Arab world. And the mix of the two worlds coming together is something that really is a signature in his work. We started from the Arab Spring, but actually we also use pictures from other uh, revolutions in the world, like the French Revolution, the World War in, uh, in Europe. So we try to make it more universal. The waiting for train are uh, a play without text and it's very hard for, for me to, to write and to direct because without text is more hard than with text. Uh, there are two people that are waiting for train and uh, they are just two person that it's uh, uh, very hard to, to take that moments without text to do a play. It's about uh, 40 minutes and it's... Uh, after three minutes, you you will know that how hard it is uh, to perform without text. This play explains a lot about our life in Kosovo uh, because uh, we are a new country born before uh, eight years and it's very hard for, for or to, to live in that place but we are working to, to going better. I tried calling him but he wasn't picking up his phone and the street was busy so I put my phone away and I remember thinking to myself it must just be a robbery. Nothing serious. I'm sure the police will show up soon enough and sort it out. Then he'll come home with a great story to tell the kids about how he was right in the middle of it. So I did my shopping and carried on with my errand. He didn't call. He didn't come home on Saturday. Kenyans now walk on the ground where my husband lay bleeding to death and some of them may never even know it. They may forget. They may leave out the history of a loving and caring husband and father and forget. But I will not. I cannot. I will never forget. Hi, my name is Laura. I was part of the production We Won't Forget that was showcased at Kampala International Theatre Festival. And We Won't Forget is a production that, that's about Kenyan stories based on terrorism, domestic and foreign. And we tackled uh, post-election violence, the Westgate massacre, and a bunch of other um, instances of terrorism within Kenya. I think we should have something like this in Kenya too. Yeah. Oh, 
what is uh, the name of your company, GL Services, again in food? Grave Roma Services. Huh? <laughs> My name is Marie Corazon, and today we had a reading for the play Grave Roma Services by Kaya Kajimu Mukasa. I was reading for the part Rebecca. Rebecca is, um, she's not really seen in the play as much, but she, she drives the character Junior to do what he does in the play, and that is a uh, rubber grave. The festival is going to be annual, so each year I guess will be different depending on the kind of submissions that we receive. I should mention that uh, our submission is an open submission process, so everyone from anywhere who feels that their theatre piece is ready to be shared with a live audience can send us their pieces and then we, we read all of the submissions and make a selection. So basically that's what Kampala International Theatre Festival is all about and uh, I hope you are enjoying it and we look forward to seeing you next year and the years to come. Thank you. Yeah, the, the third edition of uh, the Kampala International Theatre Festival uh, is quite interesting, you know, being uh, in a new space here at Ndere uh, Centre. Uh, as a prolific mind trying to uh, utilise the space and make sure that you make the transformation that you want to see. What? <coughs> you mean? Homosexual, yes. Oh my God. Ashan. You could get into trouble just knowing about that and not telling. They want a family. I'm very uh, interested in teaching actors how to come from themselves instead of reaching from outside of themselves because I believe all we need to act, we already have it. All the emotions we need, we already have them. And so that's been really a truly humbling experience and it's been the highlight of my month actually. I love working with actors because I love school, I love being a student and now I'm finding that I love teaching. It feels like to come back home and find one less person in the house. I remember when my mother died. It was the first time I got to perform it in Uganda and it is about Ugandan women and so there was a, I don't know what the word is, but it, it, it I'm still processing it but I just know that it was an experience that's going to live with me for a while and being able to perform it for a Ugandan audience and to receive feedback from a Ugandan audience and to know that these women's stories are being told in the same country where I got them from. I think it's important to always give back and to always take from everything that you do. And so I feel like this festival has allowed me to do both. Yeah, the sun shines bright. But on this night, when towns light bonfires, my country is a badly taken self. We must not delete festival on social media and I'm just interested in knowing about what kind of theater is happening in the African continent so I saw that this festival was happening here in Uganda and I came to check it out primarily to see what are the stories that people are speaking about in Africa you know so there are some plays about politics there are some plays about identity and I think is Kampala is a very interesting place in Africa to converge at the moment and it's an opportunity for me to 
seek out or to understand how this festival is being done so that we can eventually do something similar in Mozambique but also have some practitioners and some place from Mozambique being represented not only in Kampala but in other cities in Africa. My name is Asimwe Debrakawe. I am one of the artistic directors of the Kampala International Theatre Festival. We have just concluded our third edition of the festival. We had uh, 13 performances in total. We had um, four readings and nine productions. edition and we look forward to the future next year it will be our fifth edition yeah! so this year we have uh, nine productions and two readings and they are from different parts of the world of course we have productions from Uganda uh, we have productions from Kenya we have a production from Burundi we have productions from Europe uh, Bulgaria, Italy, we have uh, productions, I think three of them from the United States and we have people who are collaborating uh, from other different parts uh, of the world. For example, we have Zimbabwean performers performing in a Kenyan production. So it's really, really, really cool. My name is uh, Nicola. We, are, we come from uh, Italy and uh, our uh, company is uh, Il Salto del Delfino with the show The Prince and The Rose and my clown Fiore that is uh, in English is a flower. It's a very great experience in this uh, festival we, we worked in, uh, in other uh, international festival uh, in uh, Fringe of Edimburgo and uh, we are very happy. I'm Robert Lin and uh, I'm here in Kampala with the uh, Kampala International Theatre Festival and uh, I'm here doing a play called A Night with Mao and uh, the play is really about uh, Mao Zedong and Chairman Mao also known as 
catch MMO in the West. So um, it's really great fun to do it in a uh, different country in Africa because everybody knows that uh, there's a long and a fruitful relationship between China, Chinese people, and Africa and African people. And Chairman Mao was really was very close to many African leaders, and uh, so we all know that. There's an interesting part that is um, for this show to be done in Africa, I rewrote a scene uh, where we have Chairman Mao meeting with Hal Selassie, the emperor of Ethiopia. Instead of in the original play, we had uh, Chairman Mao meeting with Richard Nixon. So I did this rewrite just to catering to the need of African audience. Hi, um, why Josephine Baker? I had to do a project on her. Uh, we had to write a 30-minute show on someone who has lived and found this woman and then found that a lot of the stories about her were all wonderful success stories that were beautiful and but just all really like perfect and I felt like in reading her autobiographies that there were there were deep pockets of sadness in this beautiful extraordinary woman and I was intrigued by that and um, yeah I looked into that and started developing the piece from a place that highlighted her the, the, the struggles yeah um, Waiting for March is uh, a play reading. I'm directing it and it's written by a 16 year old called Cole Mangutunga. And how it came about, uh, KITF has a program for young people where we have a mentorship program um, once every year. And we, we get a couple of young people between the ages of 15 and 24. And Coleman was like the second youngest, he's 16, that came for this year's program. And the idea is that we mentor them in playwriting, and then soon after that, um, we pick the best play. I am part of a strings team by Angela Moreno. I am doing strings. I am very excited. The festival is very interesting. Lots of people are here, and they loved our production because we did the first, um, the first one on 22nd. Now we are doing the other one today on 25th. It's amazing, it's a blast. I'm doing Lair. She's a girl who's having a sort of trouble with her mom, and then her mom is having a sort of relationship. It's hilarious, but it's amazing. People loved it, I'm so excited, I'm so thrilled. Uh, working with Angela has been a great experience, and um, she's very loving, she understands, and she educates you along the way. So I'm very glad to be here, and I love, love, love the festival. Uh, this, at this year's Kampala International Theatre Festival, I've been a part of two productions. Uh, one of them being Strings, written and directed by Angela Emeron. I play the role of stage manager on her production. And the second production I was a part of is called A Ghost Story. Um, it is written by myself and also directed by, once again, Angela Emeron. Um, it was workshopped for three days during the festival and it had a dramatic reading. Thank you. My name is Sylvie Cassini. I'm the writer and director of A Man Like You, which we've been lucky enough to bring to this festival this year in Kampala. A Man Like You is a conversation between a British hostage, Patrick North, and his Somali captor, Abdi, set in a windowless concrete room in Somalia. It raises a lot of very topical issues, especially for countries like ours, Kenya and Uganda. And it's a great place, so please come and see it. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Davina Lennon from Kenya. I play Elizabeth North in A Man Like You, long-suffering wife waiting for her husband to come home. I'm Uman Boga. I play Hassan. <laughs> Hassan is uh, the tourist. Hi, my name is Kevin Hansen. I play uh, Patrick North and I am a British diplomat who's been held hostage. Hi, my name is Michael Gudakwashe. I'm from Zimbabwe and I play Abdi. Is he a terrorist or is he not a terrorist? I don't know. directors of the Kampala International Theatre Festival and I'm also a director of Tebere Arts Foundation 
which co-produces this festive. This is our fifth edition. We have had four editions in the past, and uh, we feel like we are making milestones as far as theatre industry in this country is concerned. Uh, this year, we changed the venue yet again, and we are the Uganda Museum. We chose this venue because of the performances we selected for this edition. We felt that um, they would fit very, very well in this space because the recurring theme of most of the projects we selected um, is identity and what better place to bring these conversations and these projects than bring them at the Uganda Museum. There's a very big sense of community around this theatre festival. We kind of all have lunch together, have dinner together. It's very nice that meals are provided. It's great because all of these in-between times that you have, whether it's dinner or whether it's walking up to the next show, are great for networking. Um, I know that I found so many of my future collaborators within this space and I look forward to seeing the magic that happens when we <laughs> work together on something. When we started this festival, one of the things... Um, we were really passionate about was to be able to do theatre differently, to explore ways of bringing conventional, unconventional kind of theatre and also have it performed and presented in unconventional spaces. And what do I mean by unconventional? I mean spaces that were not originally designed for theatre performances. So, for example, when you look at the different spaces where we have had performances uh, in this festival, you will realize that these are uh, you know, uh, spaces that are not really designed for, for theatre. So, for example, where I'm speaking from right now, this is a car gallery, and uh, some of the performances that we had here had something to do with migration, with uh, the refugee crisis, um, and so we thought that this, there's no other space that would really work so well uh, than this space. And also the historical connotation of this place uh, being a Uganda museum, but something that was set up by the colonialists, you know, trying to explore the relationship that we as a country uh, have with our former colonial masters. Fortunately, we weren't able to secure funding last year um, and we, we worked very hard uh, to, to come here and share these stories. And We brought Evros, the Crossing River, here uh, to share the stories of uh, the refugee crisis across the ages, starting in Syria, going back uh, French Huguenots and Armenian uh, genocide. The best part was the, op the way that things were put together in the sense that we had a panel discussion in the beginning and all of the, all of the plays had sort of a similar theme. Um, the discussions after the show also helped just in terms of unpacking the content um, and, and, and engaging with an audience. So th that was a great thing. Exchange of thoughts, exchange of um, skill, um, you know, even exchange, you know, having Ugandans and South Africans work together in productions. I think that um, definitely uh, is something we can, we have a lot to learn from each other, I think. And I think it became really apparent to me at the Q&A on Friday that just how much we have a, an ethos as a company to get unheard voices heard. Uh, we feel very strongly about it. And I realized hearing everybody else that was here that everyone was on the same wavelength and the people that created this festival had the same sort of integrity and heart and wish that we had. And it, so we, I felt very in, aligned with this festival. And if, yeah, those that have a political message within theatre or those that are trying to give voice to something that needs to be heard, it feels like they should come here and share their work in this space. I would recommend that.
I came with a show called No Rest in the Kingdom. Yes. Um, it, it's our first time in, in, on the continent of Africa and oh, yeah. Nice. And of course our first time in Uganda as well. Yeah. Um, it's also a second international show. I was really nervous about how it was gonna, like it, it's very, it has very many Indian and actually very city references. It's not even, India's so large, you can't like make a show about India. So it's very, very specific in terms of cities. I was really trying to figure out whether it would land. And I think it did. I think a lot of people understood and related and, and enjoyed themselves, yeah. which is really important yeah. for this show, especially that you have a good time. All these different productions, they are all dealing with the topic of identity, they are all dealing with the topic of migration. Um, and you can really see that these topics, um, they are like the main topics in life. And it's not, it doesn't matter where you come from, but you always uh, search for your identity, you always um, search for this meaning of life. This was the first time that When Swallows Cry was performed as part of the Kampala International Theatre Festival. Um, it was an interesting experience, you know. Um, we didn't know what to expect coming here, so there were no, there were no thoughts or ideas of what it would be like. And so the whole time was really just a, an amazing time of, of, of awakening and realizing and meeting, you know, Ugandans, um, meeting people from other countries as well. We two productions from the UK um, and also a production from India, an Iranian. What I've seen here is out of words, like. You just breathe talent. I don't know. I'm just very impressed and very glad to have been part of the festival. Uganda has talent, Uganda attracts talent and we should keep at it. Hi, my name is Karishma Bagani. I'm the Associate Artistic Director of the Tebere Arts Foundation and I'm really excited to have been part of the curating team for this year's festival. Good, it's nice to know that the shows that have been curated are actually inspiring and actually challenging art in Uganda and artists. The performances that were done, especially the musicals, they brought something different to the theatre in Uganda, considering the fact that not very many theatre practitioners have invested time in the musicals and the fact that the emerging artists have picked interest in it. So for me that was the take home for the emerging artists. My name is Megan, I'm a photographer. I've seen a few theater productions back in California, but here is like so much more cultural. And I think it's really important, especially for countries with like a turmoil type history to process things that have happened in the past and that are coming for the future. And I think theater is such a good way to start the conversation. Je m'appelle Zéro, je suis burundaise et je suis actrice comédienne euh, et je suis ici au festival euh, Kampala International Festival euh, 
je travaille sur euh, Awanawa Maazi, sur Jérôme Maazi, et euh, c'est ça, et je suis ravie d'être ici. I left the village to the Des productions que vous invitez varient euh, parce que, parce que si je me rappelle, j'étais au festival de 2017. Je suis un grand fan des enfants de Amazi. Oui, parce que c'est mon favorite préféré que j'ai vu. Mais à côté de ça, je dois dire que toutes les productions ici ont un production niveau professionnel et je les apprécie aussi. I really enjoy very much the production of uh, Bujumbura from the Burundi. This is more dance program. With, I mean, you can feel it's really coming from personal experience of the different dances. Very high quality for, of the dancers, of the actors as well. And I really like also the smaller piece from Rwanda. Children of Amazi, I kind of relate. I mean, when you bring nature into the picture and what we as humans are doing to nature, it's terrible. And we need to put that word out there. Respect nature, respect you know, the beauty of what is around you. In addition of the Kampala International Theatre Festival, I've been fortunate to be here for four of them. And I think the shows that I've seen have been really diverse. I really love a lot of the work that I've seen. I think it's great in terms of quality. Um, I love that the festival have chosen pieces that are talking about social or political issues that are affecting people in their own countries and they've used the arts or theatre as a platform to express those things. The Very Arts Foundation is a platform that offers mentorship to different emerging artists in, through different kinds of arts like acting, writing, directing, among many others. It gives us a chance to bring out the art to people and probably we hope that we shall change people's perception about art. Your mother is Alice Adam. Was okay, okay. Your brother, Vincent Opio, he is still alive. She don't even know it does. I don't even know where to find it. Okay. Will you at least do me a favor hmm? and set me free? Fagon play about a transformation of a ch an innocent boy to a child soldier, and this guy play like five personalities in an one hour play, like five guys, five. <laughs> We performed with the, the Last Day of Spring. I was the actress and the writer. Our main character had lost her brother in the army and uh, she wants to take him from the military cemetery to her grandfather's land. What makes this play common with other people? It's loss. It's about loss. It's one of the plays that I found very interesting. It was called uh, Hard Stuff, Happiness, you know. <laughs> it was real hard stuff, you know. 
trying to understand it, interpret it, and the fact that when we stepped out of the auditorium, everybody had a different interpretation of what it was, and for me that brought up what art is all about. It is a co-production between Kenya Institute of Public Theatre and Transit Theatre Berlin, and that's called uh, Hard Stuff Happiness. It's been a very interesting experience and uh, one that I'm taking so many lessons from. You know, working in a big team, um, one of the biggest things that I've learned in the process is to really lean on the support of everybody else. We have such a phenomenal team this year that is really uh, putting their all in everything that they're doing and it's really been a great experience working with everybody. Very, very beautiful event. I really appreciate it. There are some remarks I would like to make because uh, I think we can maybe next year because uh, we're actually keen to establish a kind of long-term relationship. What you do is very, very important. This uh, festival, uh, uh, theatre festival, is important to disseminate and to work and to give a chance to artists to be the ones conveying the most important messages about what is happening in society. I just want to shout out and give a big, big thanks to our sponsors, the Sundance Institute, the Dune Foundation, Africalia, USA for Africa, Absa Bank, Cardamom and Coffee, The Bistro, um, and the list continues to go on uh, without, and the European Union, of course, who really, sh really revolutionized our audiences this year. Um, without them, we wouldn't be where we are today, and we're eternally grateful and look forward to continuing um, our partnerships. And another shout out I want to give is to the team that we don't see doing the work at the forefront. You know, um, Aganza, my co-producer, has been phenomenal in handling the entire festival on the ground. But beyond the two of us, there's an entire team that allows the two of us to do what we do, and they don't always get recognized. So I want to give a big shout out, and from the bottom to the top of my hat, I want to say thank you to everybody that has been involved in the festival and in making this possible. Right here, make sure that you're balancing. Let me help you with that.